Praise the Lord Church. Once again, we are coming to you from Nairobi West Parish where we are bringing the message, the midweek message that is for fellowship for every district and every believer to hear what the Lord has for each one of us. I want to thank the pastor, the pastor team for giving us such an opportunity and such a chance even to share the word of God being read by our able moderator, that is Reverend Festus Gitonga. Once again, I thank the communication team even for making it possible for the message to reach the members who are listening at large. I want to thank the, my family in particular for giving me such also accordance that that is the chance even to share the word and giving me the permission to share the word. I want to thank my wife and my four children, Eric, Dennis, Faith, and Kevin, even for being there for me, even when I was uh, preparing for this message. So I welcome every member to listen and to hear what the Lord has for each one of us so that we may understand the way God works in our lives. I know it is a long time since we had a service, more than four months or so. <clears throat> we have not been having a service, and it has always been online, and the Lord has been speaking to us in various ways and various circumstances. My topic today comes as stay calm in all seasons. Stay calm in all seasons. And uh, our reading will be coming from the book of Ecclesiastic, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 8. Let's read together, and I believe the Lord will bless us as we do so. The Bible says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to wipe, to weep, and a time to love. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain. A time to search, and a time to give up. A time to keep, and a time to throw away. A time to tear, and a time to mend a time to, to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time, of war, a time for war and a time of peace. That's the word of God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you. We want to bless you this evening for giving us a chance and even an opportunity to share your word and to speak the oracles of God to your people, O oh God. And I want to thank you even as you have put that message in my heart that we may share with your people that staying calm in all seasons is your word, O oh King of all glory. I pray that you may use me as a vessel to the glory and honor of your name. I praise myself in your presence because I cannot do on my own I need you to walk with me in this message as you speak to your people and encourage them at this time of COVID-19 that they should always entrust and have faith in you at all times or to the glory and honor of your name. I thank you and I bless you and I give you glory and honor for it's in Jesus' name I pray and I believe. Amen. So as the word of God is reminding us, it's telling us that there are seasons in our lives as we live that comes and goes. And every season has an end. Every season has a beginning. And when it has a beginning, sometimes it is very hard as we are undergoing that season. And so when the season is ongoing, we undergo very many stages in our lives that makes us almost to give up. But I want to remind each one of us from every sphere of life 
that when we are undergoing like the situation we are undergoing of COVID-19 in our nation and the, and the world at large, we are supposed to be focused unto the Lord Almighty who will always carry us through these seasons that comes in our lives. And so even as the book of Ecclesiastes says, there is a season for everything that goes along in our lives. And I want to speak about the six spiritual seasons that we have in our lives, that we undergo in our lives, that we should be focused unto them and knowing that when we are undergoing those, those seasons, the Lord is together with us. Because at times we forget that the Lord is together with us as we go in some of these seasons. And so I want to remind each and every member, each and everybody who is listening to this message, that the Lord is together with us in all seasons that we are undergoing, even as a nation, as a church, as a family, and even at the world at large. The Lord is together with us. And so one of the six spiritual seasons that we undergo, one of them is called the dry season. And during these dry seasons, things are very hard for us as a church, as a family, and even as an individual, as you undergo this dry season. The devil tries to speak to us and to remind us that we are not going to make it in this dry season. But I want to remind you, my brother, my sister, that the Lord is working together with you in this dry season. Just be focused unto the Lord, and the Lord will carry you through this dry season. And during this dry season, the goodness of the Lord will be together with us. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they were to be put into the furnace, that was their dry season. And when they were put into the furnace, they knew one thing in their hearts, that the Lord was together with them in the dry season that they were supposed to be put. And so when they were put into the, into the furnace, the Lord worked together with them and they became victorious. When others looked unto the furnace, they had put three people, they were seeing four people. And so the Lord is together with us in the dry seasons that we undergo in our day-to-day -day life. My brother, my sister, I want to encourage you this evening that the Lord is working together with you in your dry season. That the Lord is watching over you in your dry season. You may not see him physically, but I'm telling you spiritually the Lord is together with you in that dry season. And you will come out victorious just like the three men came out victorious. Remember Daniel? The same. He, became, he, be, he came out victorious when he was put into the lion's den in his dry season. When he was put into the lion's den, he became victorious because, one, he was with the Lord when he was in his dry season. And so, and to you, my sister, my brother, as you are listening to this message, remember, in that dry season that you think you're alone, you're not alone. I'm reminding you that the Lord is working together with you in that dry season, and you'll come out victorious in Jesus' mighty name. And at the end of the day, you will say, surely, goodness and mercy of the Lord shall follow us all the days of our lives. And so when we are in dry season, it is a tough time in our lives. It is a tough time to you as a brother, to you as a sister, to you as a family man. It is a tough time. And sometimes you have no one to turn to. But I remind you one thing, that turn unto the Lord. And the Lord will be the source of your inspiration in that dry season. And so, that is one of the areas that we are, and uh, particularly as a nation, COVID-19 is our dry season. And everybody is looking for a solution. The doctors are looking for a solution. The world at large is looking for a solution. But yet, they have not come to a solution. Our solution is in the Lord God Almighty. When we focus unto the Lord in this dry season of ours, the Lord will carry us through to the end of it, or to the glory and honor of his name. It is a dry season. 
And the other season that we undergo as human beings is the waiting season. And in the waiting season, it's when we are looking forward, but yet nothing looks as if it's coming. So when you are in that waiting season, we have to have patience in our lives as brothers and sisters. Because waiting time, many of us lose hope. Many of us even went ahead, goes, goes ahead to commit suicide because they are not ready to wait upon the Lord's doing in their lives. So in the waiting season, we should be still and patient upon the Lord because the coming of the Lord needs us to be patient in our lives. So as a good example, we see Joseph when he was with his brothers. You remember the dream that he dreamt? And the brother said, this is a dreamer. The brother says, this is a dreamer. And when the dream came into reality after so many years, remember, after so many years, the Lord pressed his dream into reality. So your dream, my brother, my sister, will come into reality at one time or the other. Ours is waiting upon the Lord. So we have a season of waiting. And so when we are in the season of waiting, let us be like Joseph, waiting upon the Lord. Because the Lord's timing is the best. Because as the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, it reminds us there is a time for every season. And every season comes and goes. Just like when the trees dries and the leaves falls, there is also a time that when the rains falls and the trees grows again and they look green again and wonderful. So I thank God that in our waiting season, we have to have patience. And the Lord is reminding us that we have to own patience as part of us as we walk in this particular life. So this season of waiting upon the Lord, like we are in the COVID-19, we should wait upon the Lord just as we are in the COVID-19. Because when the Lord comes, he will rescue us in due time. And when we are rescued, we shall say, surely goodness and mercies of the Lord has been patient with us. And the Lord has worked together with us. So ours is to wait upon the Lord and be patient so that the Lord's timing in our waiting place, we may take what the Lord has for us. And when the Lord looks, from, looks unto us from heaven and he sees you as my sister and my brother, wherever you are, the Lord will bless you in a special way. So waiting season is very important that we should have patience as people who are trusting God in as we wait. And God's timing is the best. Remember also the story of Hannah? She waited upon the Lord. And even waiting time, it makes us cry, groan, groan before the Lord, so that the Lord may hear our cries. She cried before the Lord, and the Lord heard her cry, and she answered. So waiting upon the Lord is very important in the waiting season because he comes at the right time. And we have good examples in the Bible, like Joseph, Abraham, Hannah, that we, can, we have read in the Bible and we have seen as they waited upon the Lord, the Lord came into their rescue. The other, that one can also be referred in the book of Psalms 5, 3, where each morning I bring my request known unto you and wait patiently. I like Psalmist, what he says. Because every morning, can you call upon the Lord? Can I call upon the Lord and wait patiently for the answer that the Lord will guide me into? One as if he were. Psalms 5, 23. Waiting, making our request known unto him, and then we wait expectantly for what the Lord is going to speak to our lives in a special way. The other season, that spiritual season that we have in our lives is the grinding season or the busy season. The grinding season is when you feel that you don't have enough time to do or to achieve what you want to do in life. Sometimes you have big projects that you want to do in your lives, but then you don't look at the other, the other part of the financial bargain that is required for that particular project. So your dream is the big project, 
And when you look at the big project, you are not looking at the other aspect of the finance to achieve your goals. So it is a busy season or a grinding season that when you are looking forward, what you are looking forward to achieve, you don't have the tools that are required because sometimes we go blindly, not knowing that we require the presence of God in our lives to make our achievement in life and making those things that we expect in, our, in lives to come into reality. So it's a, the grinding season is when we are too busy looking forward to achieve those objectives or those goals, but yet we don't. In one way or the other, we are not in a position to deal with what is ahead of us. And you only realize later that you are not able, but yet your objective was that big. And so the Lord is reminding us when we are in such a season or the busy season or the grinding season, we have to rely on God. My brother, my sister, as you listen to this message, let us be reliant on God as our source of inspiration. In all that you object to do as an individual, as a family, as a church, and even as a nation, let us be objective and let us rely on God in achieving our goals. Because when we rely on God in achieving our goals, my brother, my sister, we shall come out victorious. Just like so many people in the word of God have come victorious in the way that the Lord has commanded in their lives. Remember Noah, when he was told to build the ark? It was just a big objective that was ahead of him. But he had to rely on God. How many years did he do, take to do, to, do the, to, do, to do the ark? So many years. But he later achieved his goal just because he was reliant on God. In our objectives, in our grinding season, in our busy season, let us be focused that, uh, unto the Lord that he will carry us through to achieve those objectives in a special way. And at this time, we rely on God's spirit. Because you remember when Jesus was leaving his disciples, what he promised them? I will leave you the Holy Spirit to be your helper, to be your guide in all that you do. And so, as a church, and as people who believe in Christ, we have to rely on what he has left for us, the Holy Spirit, to guide us, to lead us, to direct us in all that we want to achieve in our lives. So, in this grinding season that is busy, we have to invite the presence of God in form of the Holy Spirit, that he may guide us, that he may lead us to the best level of our lives, or to the glory and honor of his name. Remember, we are talking about the spiritual six seasons that we go through in our lives. We spoke about the first one, and that is the dry season. We spoke about the second one, and that is the waiting season. And we have spoken about the grinding season, or the busy season, and that is the third one. The fourth one is when we face trials and temptations in our seasons. This will, there's a season of trials and temptation season. So when we are in that situation, hard times in life come either as a family, as a nation, as a church, and if we don't rely on God on those trials and temptations that comes in our lives, those hard times, then we shall not be victorious in our lives. Remember, if we don't give up the Lord will always grant us victory in the very many trials that we are undergoing through. As hard as they are, the Lord is in those circumstances together with us. Remember, sometimes we are in those circumstances and we see the circumstances and not the Lord who is together with us. I remind you as a church, I remind you as a brother and as a sister, that the Lord is together with us in those circumstances that we are undergoing in our lives in our trials and temptations. Sometimes you may look and you may see a sieve. What you are undergoing through, others are not going through. And you may look and see that what you are going through, it is impossible to go through. But I remind you that when you focus and you let God to walk together with you in that storm, he will take you through. 
just like he did to so many people. Remember Moses, he asked him that if you want me to go to Pharaoh to free your people, I have to go together with you. Remember the same thing in your life, that when you want to succeed in that trial, in that temptation, remind God that you need to work together with him in that trial and temptation. And you will succeed because those are seasons in life that comes to an end, that has a beginning and has an end. Just like the winter comes and the autumn comes and the spring comes and follows one another from one to the other. So a season has an end and a season has a beginning. So as we, uh, we pass through the trials and, tempt and uh, the tests and trials season, let us know that it is not an easy time, it is a hard time, but our focus should be on the Lord who is the source of our inspiration, who is the source and who will carry us through those trials and tests in our lives. As hard as the trials are, let us trust in the Lord to allow him to carry us to the next level in our lives. Let us allow him to strengthen us and increase us in all that we do, all to the glory and honor of his name. And let us always be fixed on Jesus Christ and not on the trials. Don't be fixed on the tests that you go through. Don't be fixed on the trials that you go through, but be fixed on Christ who will carry you through the trials and tests that you are undergoing. You can read that from Corinthians 4, 17 up to 19, and it will help you understand what I'm speaking about. And also in Galatians 6, verse 9, it will encourage you and remind you that when you are undergoing through those temptations or the trials, the Lord will carry you through. The other one is the spiritual warfare season. That is number five, spiritual warfare season. It is where you are going through. You are doing something, right, in the spiritual realms, but the devil is not very happy about it. So you are doing the right thing, but the devil is not happy about it. And so you find yourself in a, in a position that the devil is countering what you are doing. The spiritual war starts from there. That is where you see you are doing something, you want to do something, but the other thing that is pushing you away from it. So we have to, take, to tell God to take control in our spiritual warfare. That is Ephesians 6, 12 tells us to put the full armor of God as we undergo that spiritual warfare season. So that's number five. And number six, and that is the one that everybody wants to be, the happy season. And that is the happy season that as we undergo the happy season, everybody would like to jump any other season and go to the happy season. Because happy season is when you experience the goodness of the Lord at all times. Remember the children of Israel, when they were entering Canaan land, they found so many other nations around them. But God gave them victory because those are happy times. God was giving them victory after victory. And so those are happy that's a happy season. That one you can also read it in James chapter 5 and verse 13. Is there any, anyone among you in trouble? Let him pray. Or is there anyone unhappy? Let them sing songs. Is there anyone of, of you? Uh, of, of you is any, let them pray. Is there anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Live through every season because these seasons come in our lives. And when they come in our lives, when we go through them, let the Lord direct us and lead us. The benefits of season is that it is nothing is permanent in our lives. So season come and go. So seasons are not permanent. And also seasons guarantees change. When it is rainy, you also expect a sunny season. So they guarantee change. Seasons always come from, move from one season to the other. Autumn, springs, summer, and winter. So it is season after seasons. And seasons will always give us incentives for the future. Because when you know you don't like, could be a, a, a cold season, and you are about to go to a, 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 a summer season, you are happy because of the incentives ahead of the season that is coming. And so, may the Lord God bless us and minister to us in a special way as you listen, as you ponder what the Lord is speaking in our hearts and in our minds, in all that we do, or to the glory and honor of His name. And the doctors say the best, the best doctors say in the world is that sun, rest, 
exercise and diet and self-esteem and friends are part of each one of us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I pray and I believe. Amen.